In this video, we're going to discuss and demonstrate counter strain for the ribs. As I'm going through this demonstration, I'm going to be touching a few different areas in the front of your chest, along your side, along your ribs, also on the top of your shoulder and along your back. I'm also going to be putting you in a few different positions which may feel a little bit awkward. Uh, as I'm going through all these demonstrations, if you feel anything that is tender, uncomfortable, if you need me to stop or change what I'm doing, please let me know and I can stop at any time. Is it okay if I begin? Yes. All right. So now beginning with our anterior rib tender points, we're going to find AR1 just inferior to the clavicle where the rib 1 inserts into the sternum. We're going to find rib 2 al along the midclavicular line just inferior to the clavicle on, and on the superior aspect of rib 2. We're going to find AR3 through AR10 along the anterior axillary line. Now AR3, we're going to find uh, deep to the pec minor and pec major uh, along the lateral aspect of the clavicle. So we can start from that midclavicular point and then move a little bit more lateral and then find the superior aspect of rib three. And then for AR4, for our female patients, we're going to ask them to move their breasts uh, to the midline. So go ahead and uh, grab your breast and move it to the, the center. And then we're going to take our hand, we're going to push into the axilla and try to reach the superior aspect of that rib with a single finger. And then we can move from there down to five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now for anterior tender points, those are most commonly associated with exhalation dysfunctions. And so to position our patient in an indirect position for counter strain, we're going to position into flexion, side bending towards, and rotation towards, which is going to draw those ribs closer together. So starting with AR1, we're going to have our patient in a supine position. So go ahead and lie with your head over here. And we can begin standing or seated at the head of the table. And we're going to go ahead and find our AR1 tender point, And we're going to find that, again, immediately inferior to the clavicle where rib 1 inserts into the sternum. And I'm going to demonstrate treatment of right AR1. So once we've found that tender point, we're going to establish our pain scale. So we're going to tell our patient, we're going to call this a 10 out of 10. I'm going to reposition you, and we're going to compare that tenderness to this original 10 out of 10. Once we've established our pain scale, we're going to take our other hand, and we're going to cradle under the head and neck, and we're going to add flexion, side bending towards, and rotation towards. And as part of that positioning, we can also move from a seated to standing position. We have to be mindful of our own body position, maybe lowering our center of gravity, keeping our shoulders down, so that we can sustain this position for a total of 90 seconds. And once we've achieved the position that uh, changes the tissue texture significantly, then we can ask our patient about the tenderness and compare to our original 10 out of 10. And our goal is to achieve at least 70% reduction, which compared to that 10 would be a three or less. Our ultimate goal is zero, but if after further repositionings with additional flexion, side bending, and rotation, if we're unable to achieve a zero out of 10, then we can settle for anything that is a three or lower. So once we've achieved that treatment position, we can hold for a total of 90 seconds or until we appreciate sufficient tissue texture change. And then we can slowly return our patient back to a neutral position, slowly and passively. And now without lifting our finger off the point, we can reassess that tender point and compare to our original 10 out of 10. Now AR2 would be treated in a similar supine position but with the AR2 tender point which is along the midclavicular line immediately inferior to the clavicle on the superior aspect of rib 2. Now moving on to AR3, we're going to have our patient in a seated position. So now for AR3, which is most commonly associated with an exhalation dysfunction, we're going to be again positioning, trying to draw those ribs closer together with flexion side bending towards and rotation towards. Now to aid in our side bending, we have a few different options based on our patient's mobility and flexibility. After contacting our tender point, here's AR3 on the superior aspect of rib three, we can have our patient put both of their feet on the table, which would aid in side bending towards the left. 
If our patient is not flexible enough to do that or is, does not have as much hip mobility to do that, we can settle with less side bending by having our patient take their left leg and just let it hang directly off the table. And if our patient is unable to position at all that way, then we can have our patient's legs hanging just in front of them. But in this case, we're gonna leave our patient's right leg under their left knee. So now to induce our flexion, side bending towards, and rotation towards, we're going to take our opposite leg, put it on the table, put their arm on our leg, and we're gonna take our other hand and we're going to uh, control their head position. Now we're gonna have them slump back into us, so go ahead and slump back into me. That initial slumping position adds a little bit of flexion and we're gonna further control that flexion with uh, the head and neck. And then we're gonna add some side bending by side shifting our hips and also side bending the head and neck. And then we're gonna also rotate by turning our hips and also turning our patient's head and neck until we find a position where there's significant tissue texture change at the tender point. And then we can compare to our original pain scale, hold for 90 seconds, and then after that 90 seconds, return back to neutral position slowly and passively, return our patient's shoulder and also their leg, and we can ask them to drop their leg into a neutral position. And without lifting our finger off the point, we can then reassess the tenderness of that tender point. Now moving down to the lower tender points, so for example, AR6, we're gonna be putting our hand into the axilla in the anterior aspect, and then uh, trying to make contact on the superior aspect of that rib. For female patients, we may ask them to initially move their breast tissue to the side so that we can make safe contact. So again, starting with four, five, six. Okay, and you can let go now. And then from here, we'll, of course, establish our tenderness scale. We'll position the legs if our patient is able to. And in this case, we're just gonna leave our patient's legs in a neutral position. And then again, we are going to position our patient with flexion, side bending towards, and rotation towards. So again, we're gonna bring our opposite leg onto the table. Their right arm is gonna go on our knee. We're gonna control their head, and we're gonna ask them to slump back into us. So in this case, because our tender point is lower, we're going to want to add additional flexion with head and neck, also additional side bending, and additional rotation. Now, as we're adding more side bending and rotation, our goal is to try to keep our patient's center of gravity uh, mostly in line with the spine and try to wrap around that point instead of dragging all the way to the side. So instead of dragging all the way to the side for side bending, we'll instead try to keep ourselves over the midline of that point. Now from there, after our 90 seconds, we'll return our patient slowly back to a neutral position. And then without lifting our finger off the point, we'll then reassess our tender point. Now moving on to our posterior rib tender points, we're gonna start with PR1. So PR1, we're gonna find on the superior aspect of the angle of rib one. And this we can find either uh, directly through the trapezius or by sweeping the trapezius a little posterior and then finding the angle of rib one uh, next to the base of the neck. PR2 through PR10, we're gonna find just medial to the medial scapular border. And starting from T2, finding spine of the scapula, T3, T2, and then moving lateral till we find the superior aspect of the angle of rib two. Then we would move down from there to rib three, rib four, five, six, and so on until we get to 10. For our posterior rib tender points, these are most commonly associated with inhalation dysfunctions. For posterior rib one in particular, it is a little bit more atypical than the rest, so we'll begin with that. So starting with our contact on PR1, on the right side, we're gonna find that superior aspect of the angle of rib one through the trapezius here at the base of the neck. Then once we've established our tenderness, then we're gonna position our patient. So this one is gonna be different than all the rest. We're gonna take our left leg, put it on the table, take their left arm, put it on our knee, which is gonna to help to stabilize their shoulder girdle to allow us to enhance our side bending and rotation right at the cervical thoracic junction. Then we're gonna take our hand, position it on their head, and in this case, we're gonna extend, side bend away, and rotate towards. This is the only rib tender point 
that behaves this way. Once we've achieved a 70% or greater reduction, we're gonna hold that for 90 seconds and then slowly return our patient back to a neutral position. And then without lifting our finger off the tender point, we're going to reassess uh, compared to that original pain scale. Now for PR2 through PR10, we're again gonna find those tender points uh, just medial to the scapular border. So we're gonna use right PR3 as an example. We're gonna find spine of the scapula, T3, and find superior aspect of rib three. And again, the posterior tender points are most commonly associated with inhalation dysfunctions. So in order to position those ribs a little bit further apart, closer to an inhalation position, we're gonna be side our patient away, rotating away, and also inducing flexion. So how are we gonna do that efficiently? We're gonna take our left hand, make contact with our tender point, we're going to put our right leg on the table and put their right arm, their ipsilateral arm, on our leg. Then from here, we're going to take our right hand and we're going to hold their head. And then we're going to ask them to slump back into us. So they slump back into us, which adds a little bit of flexion. And then we're going to add some more flexion using their head. We can add some side bending away. So the point's on the right, so we're side bending to the left. And then we can also add rotation to the left as well, further drawing those ribs apart and bringing that tender point to its position of ease. So once we've achieved 70% or greater reduction in tenderness, um, then we'd hold for 90 seconds, return slowly back to a neutral position. And then without lifting our finger off that point, then we reassess for tenderness. Moving down further, we're gonna add additional flexion, side bending, and rotation to achieve our position of ease for uh, the lower ribs. So for PR8 on the right, we can find our inferior scapular angle, find T7 spinous process, T8 transverse process immediately lateral to it, and then move lateral to that to find the superior aspect of the angle of rib eight. From here, we can add our leg positioning for additional side bending. So go ahead and take your right uh, ankle and put it under your left knee. And that's gonna aid with our side bending to the left. We're gonna put our right leg on the table, put their arm on our leg, grab their head, and then have them slump back into us. And then we'll add additional side bending with their head and neck, as well as shifting our uh, pelvis to the side and also add rotation by turning our pelvis as well as turning their head and neck to wrap around that point to create a greater position of ease for that tender point by bringing those ribs apart. And after holding for 90 seconds, we return our patient back to a neutral position slowly with their arm down and their leg also in a neutral position. And then without lifting our finger off the point, then we would reassess for tenderness. So as a memory aid, it can be helpful to notice that there is a reflection between treatment positioning for anterior ribs on one side and posterior ribs on the opposite side. So for treatment of AR3 on the left, we would first make contact. We would have our patient put their right foot under their left knee. We would put our right leg on the table. We would put their arm on our knee. We would grasp the head, have them slump back to flex, side bend to the left and rotate to the left. But this position is identical to the treatment for PR3, which we'd find here on the right side. Right leg would still be tucked under the left knee. Our right knee would still be on the table. Their right arm would be on our knee. We'd be holding their head. They'd be slumping back into us, into flexion, and then side bending to the left and rotation to the left.